Um, so the heart and lung are married, right? They are physically tied to each other. Um, it's not always a good marriage, but they can't get divorced, right? Um, and so even in even normal, healthy hearts and lungs are intrinsically tied, right? Um, and so there is a pulmonary cardiac reflex where even if you force yourself to hyperventilate and you just start breathing fast, your heart rate will go up compensatorily, um, which makes sense when you think about um, the whole purpose of our, of our heart. The only reason we have a heart is to love and to pump the blood that our lungs have put oxygen into, right? Um, now, cardiologists don't like when I say that because they think the heart's important, but really the lungs are the most important organ of the body. We've all established that. Um, and the heart is just there to take that beautiful oxygenated blood that the lungs have worked so hard to condition and then pump it around the body, right? So the heart is just a servant of the lungs. So if your body, if your brain, remember old brain again, right? The old part of the brain that controls heart rate, controls respiratory rate, et cetera. If that old part of the brain senses that your respiratory rate increases for any reason, it says, oh, the lungs are working harder. They must be oxygenating more blood. We got to do something with this great blood. We got to pump it around faster so it doesn't get wasted. So whenever your respiratory rate goes up, your heart rate usually goes up in tandem if things are functioning appropriately. So that's one part of it. That's in normal, healthy hearts and lungs, right? Kids, everybody. Now, the other thing that happens is if you are anxious or not happy with how your breathing feels, um, anxiety jacks up your heart rate. Most patients with lung disease, um, any type of lung disease are out of shape. Sorry to say this, but most of you are out of shape. Even if you are thin or go for walks, walking is not exercise. Walking is great for you. You should keep doing it but it's not true cardiovascular exercise, like getting on a treadmill, training for a marathon, right? It's, it's not the same as cardiovascular fitness. So myself included, most people here are not in true cardiovascular shape like Michael Phelps, right? So when you try to exercise because you've been slowing yourself down because you don't wanna feel winded because it's a horrible sensation as we've established, your heart just isn't in good shape. What it means to not be in good shape from a heart perspective is that the heart actually is not as strong and can't pump as much blood every time it squeezes. So if it can't pump as much blood per volume each squeeze, it has to pump faster to make up for that volume, right? And so people who are out of shape, no matter who they are, they have a faster heart rate for any given activity. So we have anxiety, we have a faster respiratory rate pump, you know, cranking up the rest of the heart rate. And we have the fact that people are just not in good shape. So when you put all that together, it's like the perfect storm that most people with any kind of lung condition, whenever they start moving around to do any kind of activity, they have a much higher heart rate than the average person would. Um, now, another inconvenient truth is that. When you have lung disease, especially things like pulmonary fibrosis or interstitial lung disease, the faster your heart rate, the lower your oxygen level goes. I'm gonna repeat that. When you have pulmonary fibrosis, the faster your heart rate, the lower your oxygen level gets. Now that does not seem fair, does it? So, you're, so you mean to tell me, I'm out of shape because of my condition. I'm anxious because of my condition. I have to breathe faster because of my condition. Those three things make my heart rate go up. And because my heart rate's going up, because of those three things I really can't control, my oxygen level is gonna go even lower than it should be, which is also gonna make me feel more anxious. Yeah, I know, not fair, perfect storm. And the reason your, blood, your um, oxygen levels go lower when your heart rate goes up is because when you have scarred lungs or fibrotic lungs or inflammation in the lungs from connective tissue disease, when anything is wrong with those 400 million alveoli, 
and their walls are a little bit thicker, those balloons are a little bit thicker, it takes longer for oxygen to get absorbed across that thicker wall and get into the bloodstream. And so when the oxygen is trying to get absorbed across the wall and jump onto a red blood cell, right? It's like you're trying to like, you know, you're at an amusement park and there's like, like a conveyor belt and you're trying to like hop onto the conveyor belt to get onto the next ride with your kid. Well, if that's going faster, it's harder to get on. And so when the blood flow is faster through the lungs and the blood is going through the lungs more quickly, oxygen has less time to get into the bloodstream. And so more, more blood is racing through the lungs without picking up oxygen. And so now you have deoxygenated blood circulating in your body. And that is blood that shows up on your pulse ox as being the unsaturated blood. So your saturations stay low. And so a lot of patients with interstitial lung disease, no matter how much oxygen they wear, if their heart rate goes too high, their saturations won't get out of the 80s if their heart rate too, is too rapid. Um, so these are some of the challenges that you're all facing. Whether you realize the physiology behind it or not, you're living this every day and, and probably have experienced this.